The Gaskin name is synonymous with greyhound racing. For Ernie, it's all he's ever known. My first memories are helping my dad in the kennel. Um, in those days, um, my dad had, had a garage um, in Enfield um, and he had a little kennel of dogs. We had about six dogs out, out in the back, back garden and um, I, I was helping him uh, and then as I was going along, growing up, you know, at school, evenings, weekends, was all about the dogs. Um, so yeah, so they're, they're my earliest memories of, of, of being with dogs, is as, as far back as I can remember. And you've got some great memories, I presume. Your dad obviously was top trainer, won pretty much everything going apart from the derby. But yeah. uh, what, what stands out for you? What memories stand out for you? The, um, in 1988, we were we only had uh, we only had a small kennel then. We had 12 dogs, um, and we qualified for the trainers championship, which was held at Walthamstow that year. Um, and we we only had say like 10 racing dogs, so to put a team of eight out and to and to win it that year, that was the first time the first year we won it. That that was a standout because I just thought that was a tremendous achievement to get them all on the. Get them all right on the night. The whole kennel was, was, was right buzzing on the night to win that was, was tremendous, yeah. Amazing achievement and, and the best dog you had took you deep into the derby to the final. Yeah, fact. yeah, yeah. Curry Hills Gara, um, he, he won the trainers championship for us that night. He, he, he won the final race. He was still only a puppy then. Then we, we took him straight over to Wimbledon. He won every round. He was favourite for the final, but unfortunately he had the trap one curse on him and he missed his break that night and he finished third. So he, he, he really was a tremendous dog. I, I loved him, you know. Um, yeah, after the derby, he went on and won the select stakes, which was at Wembley then. Um, and he then won the Yarmouth derby. Um, he went on to be a, a top stud dog as well. He, he, he was a really good dog, yeah. And then you took some time out and you went over to America to learn more about greyhound racing there. Did yeah. you bring anything useful back with you? Well, I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, by that stage, that was the mid 90s. Um, we was uh, training at Walthamstow then. Um, I was like young and, and keen to try different things. So I went over um, to Lincoln Park, which is uh, like 30 miles from Boston. And I run a kennel there for a guy for uh, about a year and a half. Um, and that was a great experience. I, I, I really loved, loved it out there, loved the racing scene out there. Um, and I think there's one thing that I learned more than anything um, in America was organisation, how to run a large kennel. We had like 80 dogs and there was only three people. So, you know, we, we had to be really be organised. The, the track raced seven cards a week. So it, it really was hard work and it was around the clock. But I, I, I enjoyed it, yeah. And I guess the more experiences you can have, the more you learn in life in anything. And, and after America, you went to Ireland and did a few years out there as well. Yeah, yeah. So when, when we came back, um, I, I went out and, and run a breeding farm in Kildare. Um, we were breeding puppies. It was just Yvonne and myself who were, were doing it. And, and at one stage, we had nearly 100 dogs there, um, mainly puppies. Um, I didn't race out there too often. I, I mainly just bred them and sold them. Most of them went back into Walthamstow um, because I had a lot of contacts there. Um, and yeah, as I say, that, that, was, that was a really good experience. I really enjoyed it. I, I love Ireland. I, I think uh, the, the Irish greyhound scene is, is nowhere else like it in the world. So yeah, that, that was really good as well. And then you came back and you got a contract at Romford training around 80 greyhounds but you've had a little bit of time away from the sport come back and you're, you're doing things very differently now you've got five dogs in a kennel attached to your house I mean yeah. firstly it's a, a wonderful setup so perfect you know being so close to home well the kennel is part of your home yeah. isn't it yeah yeah um I as I say I've spent a lifetime working with dogs and most of that time uh, has been running a large kennel when I was working with my dad, we only had, say, like a maximum of 12 dogs. And every dog had a lot of individual attention. And I loved that. I, I really enjoyed getting to know e each dog's personality. So when the opportunity came uh, of, uh, for me to, to, to do this building project, I thought, when this is all finished, I just want to get back to basics, get back to how we started just treat you know like each dog individually keep a few dogs and and, and enjoy looking after them yeah, i mean it is such a, a privilege to uh, 
to, to look after these dogs. But when you're working in a large kennel, it does get you down sometimes, you know. Um, when you've only got a few dogs, like the, the passion never leaves you, you, you know. And you strike me, I've been here watching you today, as a bit of a perfectionist. So I guess training a lesser number of dogs allows you to be that way with them and just do everything exactly how you want Exactly, to. yeah. Yeah, I am. I mean, people will tell you in the past I'm a nightmare to work for because I just like everything done just so and I am a perfectionist. You end up seeing that relationship between you and the dogs so much more. They look to you for you know, reassurance with the camera here today and it's just a real one-on-one -on -one bond that's there. And I think that's all part and parcel of helping to keep a dog happy. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I think uh, in an ideal world, that's, that's how every ground should, should be trained. I, I know that it's, it's difficult to do that with large kennels. I know it's not, not as easy as that. And I'm really lucky to, to be in this position to be able to do this. You can't make a living out of training five dogs. It's a good job that your kennels are just behind that door there because it's a pretty long day that you work isn't it? Um, in the summer I, I, li I'm a, I like to get up early um, before the heat of the day so uh, I, I have the dogs out and we're out walking at 5.30. Because uh, say they, they're literally in my house uh, I can just keep popping in and out through the day uh, and then I have them out say like nine or ten o'clock at night just you know, like before I go to bed you know. They really are, they're part of the family really, can say they, they, they live in the house with me. This whole setup was purpose built. You know, they say all, all the experiences I've had different places around the world, I've picked up different things. So they are, they're purpose built kennels. I, I like to have all the dogs feeling relaxed, you know, so it, it works, it's working well. I'm always intrigued as to what trainers feed. And as you said, you've picked up things across the world. So tell us about what food these dogs are getting. Well, um, it's, uh, it's basically the same, like the, the breakfast. I, I, I'm, I'm a believer in, in, in dogs having breakfast. I, I, I don't buy into the, the once a day. Um, so, say so they have Weetabix um, and milk for, for their breakfast. Then um, their main feed uh, is early afternoon, which is a uh, gain and raw meat mixed with, with a soup. That's, that's the, the basic things. A couple of secret ingredients. Are Se we giving them away? Secret ingredients. I'm a little bit quirky. I, I like to try different things, see if we can find uh, a, a winning formula. So I like to experiment with different things. My latest thing is beetroot. Uh, I, I think um, beetroot is really good for, for us, so why wouldn't it be good for the dogs? So yeah, I'm trying that now. And you told me you give spinach, like yeah. Popeye. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I really believe in, in the goodness of spinach. Um, you, you, can't, you can't eat too much spinach. And you have the facilities here as well for them to run free, a nice big paddock which you still not quite finished yet with the heat wave, you're going to grass the end. Yeah, I'm waiting for the autumn so you can't turf in the heat, so uh, yeah, we're almost there. I mean this whole project is, is almost at a conclusion now, but uh, there's still a few bits and pieces that need to be done. And just around the corner you have use of a fantastic gallop as well. Yes, yeah, they say we, we've had that field. I put that new gallop in just to start from fresh, you know, and so yeah, that, 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 that works well too. The dogs love running up there. I dread to think how stressful it's been for you building these houses, but now you're almost done and, and you're at this point in life now where you've got these five greyhounds. How happy are you now? I'm happy. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy what I do. I'll be even happier if I, uh, if I won some category one races. <laughs>